Well, a tour of duty on the lighthouse was a year. When I found out I was going, I had to go to Juan Chi's Wharf. And that's where I had to meet my boat that was going to take me out to the lighthouse. A boy named Orville Tillett was a seaman on the lighthouse and he met me in the boat. And I took that over and he went on home on his week off. Well, he'd already got the groceries for that week and all I had to do was take the boat out to the lighthouse and we'd hoist it up, put it in with its davits, keep it right by the deck, tie it down. And uh, that's when I met Mr. Ralph Burris. He was the keeper. And uh, we went inside and he showed me around and uh, told me how that he'd cooked the week he was on there with me and I washed the dishes. And uh, showed me the ice box, this old timey ice box with the he said, the center where you made your ice in trays. Mm -hmm. And he said, now, David, this side is yours. This side is mine. We order, when we order our drinks, you put your half here, and I put mine over here, and we don't bother each other. Which I found out later, when he gave out, he didn't mind helping himself <laughs> to David's. And uh, he showed me all that stuff and the generators and batteries and whatever. And where my bunk was, little room up top. Uh, I'd call it a cubby hole. It was real small. And it was noisy sometimes too. But Ralph, he was the cook when I was on my time. And I was a week with him, and uh, we didn't have a certain time to get up. He was always up with the chicken. He, he was better than an alarm clock, because when he think, thought it was time for you to get up, he would start rattling the pans in the sink. And that does make a noise on the lighthouse. Noise, noise transfers easily to his through the whole place. And, uh, you well, you'd get up and he'd have breakfast for you. You'd eat and he'd go call in on the radio, make his report to the Coast Guard station and I'd wash dishes, clean up the galley. Galley and mess all, all together, a stove and a table. <laughs> and, uh, then he'd say what he'd like to do that day. Of course, we had to charge the batteries, check out the machinery, have to make sure all that was okay, and then we'll paint something and start sujing. That's scrubbing. And the service would call it suji. Sometimes the lighthouses were clean. Man, I'm clean, I'm telling you. You could eat off the floor and everything. You hear people say that, but you could then. And uh, sometimes, if you didn't have anything else to do, you'd scrub the walls, suit you the walls down that they did last week. You couldn't tell where they needed it, but you'd done it anyway. One time, I came back from my liberty a week off. And Ralph was going ashore on his time off. And he's showing me around, me around of what he would like to do, some of the things he liked for Orville and me to do while he was gone. And he told me, he says, David said, now we the living room area. He says, Orville and I sued half of this, the walls and half of the ceiling. And said, I'd like for you to get finish it up while I'm gone. And he had a list of other things too. And I'd do them and check them off. And I, if I didn't want to do them, I wouldn't check them off because he couldn't tell whether I'd done it or not. So after he left this time, uh, 
I said, Orville, I said, up here, whereabouts in the overhead did you stop scrubbing? He said, oh, over here somewhere. I said, well, I said, we scrubbed, we, we sued you that right fast. When he came back, he looked over everything. Looked over to, up, up the house, up to the ceiling. He said, see, he did it all. Looks good, too, David. Everything in here looks better. We hadn't touched the ceiling. He couldn't tell. It's so clean. And that, that's the way it was uh, most of the time. I mean, you'd keep doing things over just to keep busy. I grew up in Manio, about three blocks from here, straight down Sir Walter Raleigh Street. I was born a big old house there, nice house. And I lived there till I was 16 years old. And then my father sold it and we moved out across the highway from the lodge hall. He couldn't see paying taxes no more than he was getting for it. Of course, it wasn't very much money, but it, not much money was a whole lot to us. And uh, we moved out there, and I've been there ever since. This was always my home. I was uh, married. My wife was a young widow. Had, she had two small children. And we had four of our own. And they have all were raised here. Most of them got good educations, went to college. All of them graduated from high school. And I never, in my travels, I never find a better place to raise a child than what he was here. If I did, I would have moved him. But this was the best place I ever, I was ever at. And they stayed right here and they've done well. If I had to go back, put it this way, if I had to go back, I'd like for everything to be the same. There was good, there was bad, but it was lovely. <laughs>